too. StarCraft One was like full grown. Yeah, yeah, but StarCraft One's that old uncle that's really creepy that you never really talk about. <laughs> oh, kind of old uncle StarCraft, but we don't really mention him in this uh, this town. So I'm gonna flip it up on you. I, I I got faith in our Protoss buddy here. I like this play. I like the strat. So I'm um, I'm gonna announce for him this time. Spawning in the northeast, now gaining my favor, which means of course he will win because everyone I have announced for has won so far. Lose. Um, you're like Artosis. Just <laughs> correcting you a little bit. It is Estherice. Am I pronouncing it? I, 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 I hope I think so. Yeah. He's gonna like be later. He's gonna be like it's Astrus. <laughs> Oh man, probe is going down. I think he just accidentally rallied it down there. That's a little bit of a mistake. Uh yeah, he's a little bit confused. Like, what do I do with this? I guess he's gonna go scout with it. So it's actually not that bad. It's a normal scouting time. Okay, so in the the southwest corner, our late announced Zerg, because the Spurtos <laughs> players were taking up too much of the airtime. Hippie Corpo. <laughs> I'm so good at that. Should have practiced his name. I can't even do that one. Uh, you know, I think it's just having an understanding of phonetics in the English yep. language. Um, I ain't that misspeak the ebonics. I, uh, I went to second grade. I did not <laughs> cut that class. Um, so maybe that's why I can pronounce that name. <laughs> Fun fact, I learned this from my mom a little bit ago. Apparently my second grade teacher didn't believe in, like, teaching, um, math and, like, sciences. She only believed in teaching, like, English and social studies. And I come from, like, a math background family, so the teacher's like... And I used to be, like... I used to... This is not... This is true. Completely true. I used to take, sort of like, an, take like an, a, an Asian after-school program for, like, getting better at math. It was called Kumon. That's, and like, that's not even an Asian thing. That's just... Yeah. Like, that was the one that, like, gave you an Xbox. <laughs> no, no, oh, yeah, but no one ever got those. What? You had to do, like... It was, like, if you do nothing but work for five <laughs> years, you can have a potato chip. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> I actually had a friend that actually managed to, uh, he and his sister both went, so they Not saved bad. up together, and they got an Xbox after, like, Not two bad. years. So that was their second Xbox. Oh, he had also bought one, so he just kind of put that one in his room. <laughs> That's put great. Xbox in your Xbox, so you can <laughs> Halo 3 while you Halo 3. Halo 3 while you Halo 2. Oh, man. <laughs> Halo 3 while you Halo Wars. Oh, please don't. <laughs> fun fact. Oh, man, so many fun facts. Um, I need to stop saying that. But um, Halo Wars was the first strategy game I ever played. Um, after I had gotten done playing with Call of Duty, because that game made me like question my sanity, much like League of Legends does. But after I played that, I actually went on to Halo Wars, because I it wasn't actually a good game, but I used to play it in game battles. There were three active teams, and our team was third. Fantastic. And we had a unicorn as our symbol, and it was awesome. And then um, my friends, uh, Jacob and Justin, I went over to their house, and he was like, you gotta play StarCraft, it's so much fun, because they're like hipster gamers, they just like travel in between games, never really stick to one, a little nomadic. And um, I remember, to this day, my first game of StarCraft, my friend Justin played me, and Justin is famously known for playing video games more than anyone I know and being terrible at all of them. <laughs> and, he mass Nidus Worms in our first game, and they came out of the ground, and it was like, Rrr! and I was like, oh my god, what is that? And he's like, it's okay, they don't attack. And then I ran my SCVs across the map and won. <laughs> and that was my first game. And that is Justin Brooke. <laughs> yes, it is. Wow, he said his last name, he's gonna get killed, man. <laughs> oh no. It's okay, he's like Kenny, he'll just come back in the next episode. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> But yeah, um, and actually I hated StarCraft, I thought it was a newbie game, Halo Wars took much more skill, and then, that's just kind of how I am though, until I like adopt games, and then um, oh, I got into StarCraft, and it's been like my baby ever since. I don't play it as much as I used to, because I split my time between League, and my friends have been playing Guild Wars again, I don't know why I hate it, but I play it with them. And, yeah, it's been good times, I love StarCraft, I think it's an awesome game. But back to the game, we actually haven't talked about <laughs> Whatsoever. That means In we're the last six minutes. Yeah, that means we're professional casters. We're confident that we know nothing is going on. So that's <laughs> what all the pros do. They just listen to our toasts, just like talk about ladder games. And that's I all think I think really is not that we're confident that nothing's going on, but we're not sure anything is going on. So we just <laughs> assume nothing is going on. Yeah, um, that's very true. So Hippie's been just kind of quietly droning up on three bases. Um, should be looking. Excuse me. 
super standard, like really textbook play from Hippie so far. Yeah, it's just like late, like they should be. Getting a lot of drones, working down the rocks at this base. I actually kind of like that. He's going to widen up that choke, which will make it much harder for the Immortal Central and to come up that ramp. Very true. Um, should be looking. He's gotten into both gases. The Roach Warren should go down soon. Um, three base, of course, best with Roach Hydra play. Um, keeping Lings around the map just to make sure, uh, one, that the Protoss player doesn't move out without him knowing about it, and two, that the Protoss player doesn't attempt the third base. Uh, more Lings just going to kind of scout about, uh, take a little victory lap um, before they are brutally massacred. <laughs> yeah. He's doing a good job, though. That's one thing I've noticed about Hippie. His macro falls a little bit behind from it, but from a progression level, he does a very good job at managing his links around the map. A little bit of, like, StarCraft 1 style, just taking one ling and moving around every spot. He does a very good job at being active with those links, poking and prodding. And while it, he might not have the APM for it, and his macro is suffering a little bit, he's banking a bit before he probably floods out a wave of drones. But it is, like, a really good way to tell that a player is very experienced, because he knows that... He might be falling a bit behind, but he knows what's important, which is these links are just everywhere on the map. He sees everything. There are no proxy pylons, nothing going on. The first thing the Protoss is going to see is with his Observer, which is always the sign the Zerg player is doing what he's supposed to by denying scouting. Very true. The Roachhorn has gone down in Evo Chamber 2 to get that ground carapace. Um, I'd like to see another Evo Chamber drop down so that he could get those ranged attack upgrades. He'll be going for a lot of spines that is natural. Um, just to continue blocking off. Um, there are two sentries and an immortal out. It's, of course, very, very late, uh, but it could be... Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but like the, the delayed two-base 1230 immortal sentry uh, yeah. with the higher well, gateway you can, unit. You can actually like transition with it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And also, speaking of me not paying attention, he actually just like kind of threw up five early gateways at the top of his base. And like, <laughs> so that's happening. And um, it doesn't look like he wants to be aggressive off of it, though. Yeah, to be honest, his macro's been a little bit... So oh, Robotics Bay going down. So he's just going to be going straight into, like, a big Colossus timing. And a second Robo. This is definitely going to be a two-base timing. He wants to get a lot of Colossus. And to be honest, against last game, it makes a lot of sense. Because if he gets Blink here, too, that, like, totally, like, craps on me to play where you get low drones like that because you just can't deal with this push there's like too many stalkers to leave half of them at home and then you just like step all over the map and crush everything very true it will be interesting to see what he builds out of this uh, twilight console that he's made so the robotics bay is almost done uh, we should see the robotics facilities jump into action as soon as that is done um, he is pushing out though Maybe just to kill that ling so that he can, he can establish his third. Hippie has a lot of lings, which, to be honest, I'm not sure I like, because while fantastic in the early game, uh, they just kind of sit on his supply count now. Uh, yeah. He's noticed that the Protoss has moved out, though, and he'll counterattack. Those yeah, will get the Protoss, through. the Protoss can actually kill this ling ball, but his force fields are going to... Oh, no! No, Zealot on the... Oh, wow. Oh, yep. Oh, man. Those That's... lings will get a lot done. And a lot of it, this is also distracting him. Protoss wants to be getting his Colossus out right now. And oh my god, so many probes. Oh, nice foot on Overcharge. But the probe should actually be on, like, stop position with a Stalker behind him to mess with the aggro. Very nice job, like, clumping all of them up so that they don't all die. But the Protoss is going to lose so much here. And even if he doesn't lose a lot of probes, it's more so the map control. Look at where his army is right now. Everything is in the main. His Mothership Core is out of energy. He can't recall. His Colossi I haven't started. He's got no position on the map, and you talked about this link being useless. Well, perhaps by a blunder, but they've given him so much map control, and now he's got the Roach Hydra army that's so scary. Right, and and he's done a, a just fantastic job of making use of that supply. Um, even though it may not seem like the most use, um, he did kill 13 workers for 50 like lings. Um, and it doesn't seem quite worth it, and it isn't in mineral count, but when you consider that the lings were sitting on his supply, like I said, uh, that he needed for other things, it was probably the best investment he could have made for those lings. Um, totally. So he's just moving into Roach Hydra, he's dropping down the spire, he recognized that there would be Colossi out, I believe he saw the robotics bay. Um, <laughs> if not, that's just a fair assumption to make whenever you're playing ZVP. Um, and he'll know exactly the army that he's dealing with, so he can know exactly how to deal with it. Yeah, 
Very interesting. A couple of things I want to know. One, we're getting up to that four base versus three base. The Zerg doesn't look like he wants to contest this. He kind of wants it to go up. He feels like his four base will be stronger than the Protoss's three base, and I don't blame him because the Protoss, he just killed off a lot of workers. The Protoss is going to take a long time to get back up and utilize that third base, whereas he already has 65 workers. He's already ready to use that. We got Overlord Speed, 2-2 two, two on the way. Most importantly, the most interesting thing I've noticed is he did this against um, Spork 2 in Game 1. He seems to favor getting the Spire and Corruptors up over um, Hive Tech and Vipers up against Colossus. Which is very interesting because it is more of a resource sink, but the difference is when you get a lot of Corruptors up, they actually just like can't have Colossus. Whereas <laughs> Vipers, they're also like steady. Like You have to dump a lot more. But he knows he's up on economy, he's going to be up a base, so I don't particularly mind the decision here. Big lane counter, though. Um, yeah, not only lanes, he's also moving his roaches in there. I'm wow. very worried for him, because those rocks aren't down. If the, he gets those hydras caught in the wrong position against those colossi, he'll be in an awful position here. Yeah, and he's got to use these force fields really effectively. If he actually ran one of those sentries up, he could force field that ramp. He is going to get the third, but oh my god, those force fields, so good. Very nice clutch force fields. He's going to lose all the Roach Hydra here, and this was the thing, like, I re there was no reason for the Hydras to be here, and even the Roaches were a little bit overkill, like, I would have much rather had him send just the Lings, and then the Roaches and Hydras to the Natural to snipe off the Mothership Core and get that Forge. And he might have not even gotten a third, but it would have been so much more worth it, because now the Protoss actually has the supply advantage, it's especially when you're going with Corruptors, like I just said, you need to have the extra money, and he just lost so much money just for the third. So he's going to be super weak right now, and the Protoss is going to go snipe that third, and there's actually nothing that the Zerg can do about it. Right. It'll be interesting to see which way the, the Protoss decides to engage it. It looks like he is going to go through that little um, point where he could be sandwiched. Um, he will make a forward pylon, so it looks like this is kind of where he wants to end the game. He'll macro up a little bit behind it, but this will be um, his end game robo attack. Um, he'll just probably make some more zealots behind oh. it. Protoss plus three attack just finished, and the Protoss is 3-2 right now. Oh, man. So this base will go down for Hippie, but if Hippie can turn around, he's going to look to snipe those Colossi out. He needs to be careful with those Corruptors. He can't lose all of them. Um, he, of course, needs those Colossi to die um, so that he can do anything. Yeah. The one saving grace he has is even though the Protoss just worked in Stalkers, that's only nine. And Stalkers won't one-shot the... That many Stalkers won't one-shot the Corruptor you need, like maybe five more. So he will be able to poke and prod in and out. And yeah, now that those stalkers are up, it's going to be harder, but he still will be able to poke and prod in and out and maybe get stuff off. He's actually going mutas, which might have been a misclick, but it's a very interesting choice here. You know, honestly, if two of those didn't just die, um, I could have liked it as a way to counterattack and maybe get that Protoss we saw last game. The Protoss was really wobbly about where his army was positioned. Um, but he's just going to go ahead and attack in now, and it looks like that's going to be game. Yeah. Um, Hippie really has literally nothing to do after uh, he lost that army at the Protoss' third base. Yeah. I mean, it's one of the things where I even question the push on the third, even though it was really nice, got the third. But I don't think he would have gotten it with just Lings, and that was bound to happen. And you look at that, if that's a Roach Hydra army with that many Corruptors, he can actually just kill the third like two minutes later, you know, because he predicted the two base losses. And the Protoss is just going to steamroll now. I felt like it was just a little bit too risky. But right. overall, very solid play from the Protoss player. Very true. Very true. Like we talked, player, we talked about... The, lanes, or the drones, excuse me. We talked about how he kind of got messed up a little bit in the beginning. Like, he got caught out on the map, but he didn't actually lose that many probes. You said it wasn't even mineral efficient, when it probably should have been. Photon Overcharger was nice, the probe micro was nice, and that's going to force a GG. And overall, just... A little bit of a misstep from Hippie, but very well played by Estorice. Now, I want to point out again, I am 4-0 now, because Estorice just won. 